Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Calibration. In this short presentation, we'll explain both the basics of test and measurement instrument calibration, as well as why calibration is important for ensuring the accuracy and reliability of measurement results. Test and measurement instruments are widely used in the design, test, debug, and manufacturing of electronic and radio frequency devices. Some of the more common test and measurement instruments include spectrum analyzers, signal generators, oscilloscopes, network analyzers, etc. Most test and measurement instruments generate and or measure signals, and they rely on many different internal components, assemblies, software, and firmware to perform these functions. All of these, therefore, will affect an instrument's ability to provide accurate and reliable measurement results. Before we go on, let's pause for a moment to explain the difference between instrument calibration and measurement calibration. Instrument calibration is performed in order to verify that the instrument is functioning within specifications. For example, that a generator is really outputting minus 10 dBm of power when output power is set to minus 10 dBm. Instrument calibration is generally performed by a service or calibration center not by the user. And, as we'll discuss, instruments are usually calibrated every few years. A measurement calibration, on the other hand, is performed to remove systematic errors from a test setup, most often when making measurements with vector network analyzers, or VNAs. It's always performed by the user and is repeated rather frequently, often before each measurement session, or at least before important measurements. In this presentation, We'll only be covering instrument calibration, so please see the separate presentation on VNA measurement calibration if you'd like to learn more about the other type of calibration. The internal components of an instrument are measured and adjusted as part of the manufacturing process. This ensures that the newly manufactured instrument meets its stated performance specifications. For example, in the case of a spectrum analyzer, the local oscillators should have a high level of frequency stability in order to prevent distortion of the measured signal during down conversion. However, over time, the characteristics of these internal components may change. This is often unavoidable, but is also normal and expected behavior. But if the characteristics of these components change too much, the instrument may no longer perform according to its stated specifications. And, as we'll see, this can have serious consequences. Therefore, a process called calibration is used to ensure that instruments perform according to their specifications. An initial calibration of an instrument is performed during the manufacturing process. And for most types of instruments, calibration should then be performed at periodic intervals. In most cases, these time intervals are on the order of a year or more. The calibration process requires the use of other instruments, often integrated into special systems, as well as carefully designed software and procedures. In order to ensure the validity of the results, calibration should always be performed by trained calibration specialists. During calibration, values for various instrument parameters are measured, and if these parameters fall outside of the acceptable range, they're adjusted back into this range. Upon completion of the calibration process, the results and other relevant data are normally collected into a calibration report. We mentioned earlier that instrument calibration is done on a regular or periodic basis, and the recommended calibration interval is typically given in the instrument data sheet or specification although in some cases, various technical standards may stipulate a certain calibration interval. Stickers are often placed on instruments during calibration, and these show both the last calibration date as well as the next date when calibration is due, although the calibration due date is usually filled in by the instrument owner, not the calibration lab. However, these calibration stickers do not contain any information about the content or the scope of the calibration. Also, note that these are different from the calibration void if broken type stickers, which are used to discourage 
unqualified persons from opening up an instrument. Both of these types of stickers are, however, important in that they provide a quick visual check as to whether the instrument is still in Cal before using that instrument for important tasks. Instrument calibration is necessary because accurate and reliable measurement results require instruments that are properly calibrated. This is particularly important because the costs of correcting issues due to uncalibrated or poorly calibrated instruments can be very high. There are many advantages to a high quality calibration. Clearly, good measurements decrease the amount of time and effort required for research and development, but they also minimize the amount of rework and scrap during the manufacturing or production process. Proper calibration is also vital for instruments that are used in repair or maintenance activities. A more general way of saying this is that a proper and valid calibration helps to reduce overall measurement uncertainty. Let's look graphically at measurement uncertainty and why it's important. In this example, we'll call this the acceptable range of values for a given parameter. When a parameter is measured, it's important to keep in mind that, like all other measured values, this value has an uncertainty associated with it. In other words, the true value of this measured parameter is not a point, but lies somewhere within this range. Smaller measurement uncertainties are always desirable, since excessive measurement uncertainty can lead to incorrect or misleading results. For example, here our measured value and its uncertainty lie well within the acceptable parameter range. A measurement with a much larger uncertainty due to a poorly or uncalibrated instrument may still produce acceptable results when the measured value is near the nominal value, as shown here. But when the measured value is close to the upper limit, the larger measurement uncertainty can lead to erroneous results, such as declaring something out of range when the true value falls within the limits. Properly calibrated instruments have lower measurement uncertainty and therefore minimize the probability for different types of error. Measurement uncertainty becomes even more critical when it comes to calibrating modern instruments. Over time, both the performance and the complexity of test-to-measurement instruments have been rapidly increasing. For example, newer technologies often operate at higher frequencies and or require more precise modulation accuracy compared to even a decade ago. Calibrating the instruments used in developing and manufacturing these technologies therefore has also become more complex and demanding. The margin of error or the acceptable measurement uncertainty has become lower and the risks and costs arising from a substandard calibration have become much higher. Therefore, Calibrating these more modern or higher-end instruments requires not just higher-end external equipment, but also more advanced and specialized automated algorithms, as well as more highly trained and highly skilled calibration specialists. So who provides these calibration services? Calibration providers can generally be divided into two categories. In addition to performing the initial calibration, Original equipment manufacturers normally also provide calibration services for their instruments. There are, however, third-party providers that also offer calibration service for instruments from many different manufacturers. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll take a few minutes to describe the most common differences between manufacturer and third-party calibration. We'll start by looking at third-party calibration. Because the general calibration process is similar, regardless of who performs a calibration, third parties are sometimes able to offer calibration services for test and measurement instruments. The advantage of having calibration performed by a third party is slightly lower cost. Calibration is sometimes viewed as a commodity, that is, that all calibration is essentially the same. But this is not entirely correct. And this is especially true in the case of modern or more complex instruments. And while it is true that third-party calibration providers can perform the basic measurements and alignments that are needed for a valid calibration, 
These providers typically perform only these measurements and alignments. Furthermore, in a third-party calibration, alignments are normally only performed when values are outside of the acceptable limits, regardless of how close values may be to those limits. This is especially problematic if the instruments used by a third-party calibration provider have relatively large measurement uncertainties. Compared to third-party calibration, manufacturer calibration is always more comprehensive and often uses the same instruments and procedures that were used for the instrument's initial calibration during production. Because of this, a manufacturer calibration can return instruments to a factory or like new condition. This higher quality calibration also provides lower measurement uncertainty and all of the benefits associated with lower uncertainty. Note too that in a manufacturer calibration, adjustments are always made to ensure that all parameters are at the optimized factory values. Even values that fall within the limits and are passing are still adjusted back to the original factory value. In addition to improving measurement uncertainty, these adjustments also help to ensure the validity of the manufacturer recommended calibration interval. That is, instruments remain calibrated longer when values have been readjusted to the original factory values. There are some additional advantages of a manufacturer calibration over a third-party calibration. Updating the instrument's firmware, software, or operating system are a standard procedure during a manufacturer calibration. In addition, instruments are also scanned for viruses and other types of malware in order to ensure the safety and performance of the instrument. The manufacturer can also perform various types of preventative maintenance or hardware updates as part of the calibration. Third parties normally would not have the knowledge or the expertise to perform these changes, which are often provided free of charge. And finally, in the event that any repairs, bug fixes, etc., or additional services are necessary, these can easily be done at the same time and in the same location, minimizing both cost and downtime. Let's end with a brief summary. Test and measurement instruments require periodic calibration to ensure both accurate and reliable measurements. Better measurements increase productivity as well as reduce risks and costs. And this is true in both R&D as well as in manufacturing or production. A quality calibration is particularly important in the case of modern, high-performance instruments, and this requires specialized equipment, sophisticated procedures, and highly trained calibration staff. Calibration can be performed either by the original equipment manufacturer or by third-party calibration providers. Although third-party calibration may be somewhat lower cost, manufacturer calibration is always superior to third-party calibration. A manufacturer calibration returns the instrument to factory specifications, with alignments performed even when values are within the nominally acceptable range. This ensures that the instrument remains in cal and provides valid results during the recommended calibration interval. The higher quality and more comprehensive calibration procedures used by the manufacturer reduce measurement uncertainty and provide greater confidence in measured results. And finally, manufacturers also typically provide many additional checks and services, such as firmware updates and preventative maintenance, during the calibration process. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Calibration. If you'd like to learn more about calibration or about calibration offerings from Rodian Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.